Hi. So, you're like my therapist. For some reason, I want to consider these things out loud. I don't know, sort of cements it a bit more when I'm changing my view. So, quite a little while back, when I was faithful philosopher on YouTube, um, I was running with the belief that there are seven other planets in the universe, like Earth, and including Earth 7, or 14. So there's either seven, or there's seven pairs of planets. So we may, may well have a planet very near us in terms of the size of the universe, perhaps in the same galaxy, perhaps in a neighbouring star. And then six others, all far away and distant. And the belief that I had been running with for a while was that our previous lives would have been on all of these other planets, it's sort of in turn. So our last life was on a planet number four, current life planet number five, next life will be planet number six, and that it we'd sort of keep going round like that. Um, but that hasn't really been uh, delivering any fruits for me. There's not really been anything coming of it. And I kind of understood that um, um, memories of previous lives would be easier to remember the previous lives on this planet now number five, um, just because, you know, it was familiar, um, <clears throat> because I haven't had any memories or hints of previous lives on other planets. The only thing I'd had was uh, a dream where a very different type of being uh, was in my dream at the end and it woke me up. Um, but that dream wasn't on a different planet, that was definitely on planet Earth. And so I really, apart from dreams which I'm not sure are previous lives at all, but possibly could be, I haven't really, they were sort of more ones in my teenage years that sort of don't seem particularly relevant, but could be. But anyway, so I'm I'm going on recollections or things I've had during meditation. And there's only really two that I would consider to be from previous lives. One, I believe, was um, <clears throat> my life as Enoch. And I was hairy, and it was ancient-like. And the other one was seeing my soulmate in a previous life. Like it was our wedding day or something. And I've had a few more insights into... Um, may have happened in that, some of the things that have happened in that life, and it um, very much looks like Earth, my soulmate looks human, and it seems to be fitting in with things, so that to me is like it is providing fruit, it's making sense of things. So. 
the actual recollection is like um she's she's got flowers in her hair um we're in a sort of a a location outside green green sort of hillock sort of thing sort of sort of place you can imagine a hippie wedding it is seemed like a hippie wedding um i've been probing that and some of the information i got is that we might have had um a not very nice end kind of it could have been some like real freaked outness um potentially you know aided with uh, drugs and that sort of stuff superstitious beliefs um i also get the feeling that i rode a motorbike and that could also be partly what it didn't end too good but not really got a lot of information there so <clears throat> but in terms of the timing if that was a previous life and that was in the say say it was in the 60s and i i was born in 77 and considering there may have been some time in the um spirit world in between I may have died quite young and my soulmate may have died as well so it's a bit i don't like take this for absolutely certain you know it could have been this this memory of seeing flowers in the hair and everything else you know could have been 400 years ago could have been whenever so you know it could have been in 1910 and still could have had a, a leather jacket and a motorbike um but like i'm only just making this decision sort of like now that i'm i'm gonna sort of roll with the uh, idea that um we reincarnate on this same planet each time now this has been coming to me because you know i've been trying to rack my head around <coughs> some of the i guess you know i came to a lot of conclusions through meditation and then time passes on and you're thinking more about them and so I haven't had the feeling so recently so thinking about the the sense behind it and the logic if it fits so you know I'm thinking today about okay so you know the human population keeps on growing and I've got this theory that you know all all of us humans have a soul and that the animals don't have a soul they have god's life force within them but if we go back a uh, thousand years the human population was very much smaller so in my theory then a thousand years ago and this applies whether we had reincarnated on different planets or not there's still our brothers and sisters existing on these other planets so it doesn't actually affect this point so a thousand years ago human population was much much smaller so if all our souls were made four billion years ago that hasn't changed the number of souls that there are for everyone right now to be uh, a soul in a human body 
where were all those spare souls a thousand years ago when the population on earth was much much smaller so they to fit in with the theory of reincarnation they must have been inhabiting animals still and if you then go back 8,000 years population was much much smaller let's just say for theoretical purposes even though we know this isn't the case let's just say it was one or let's go back a hundred thousand years and say human population was one so the first man say for example um, then all the other souls would have been still living lives as animals so because we can't you know having come from being created four billion years ago and in the very very beginning living life as uh, you know a single cell creature just whatever that experience was you know it was the very first experience so it was just like first time being alive in something and then you know whatever we learnt through these little lives we were learning and you know we're all different so we all took different tacts and some followed others because theirs was working well and you know all sorts of myriad of different things happened so we all, we all weren't at the same uh, the same level sometimes we were doing better than other times and if so if you're progressing more sometimes than you are other times then it's not this even sort of progression although I guess you're always growing so you could argue that you are always growing so you could also argue that someone living a life as a lion wasn't necessarily lower than the person living the life as the first man but certainly the person living the life as the first man was getting the first chance to do things than anybody else had didn't necessarily make it more important than someone who was perhaps having a life as a fox so that's what I'm trying to say so then as the human population grew more souls were ready or wanting to or yeah just it was their thing to live that life you know whether God ordained it or within God's plan of everything it just fits in to how it ought to be so dilemma we get to 2016 summer 2016 now I had heard it said that the human population at that time had hit its sort of peak growth that um, that the human population would continue to grow but that it would uh, sort of slow down in its growing and sort of they think it might level out at about 10 billion now why is my theory that it's right now that that we're at the point of every soul has now is now in a human body why why now why there so it was just a sort of I guess I suppose you know perhaps part of me always wants to feel like we're in the end times the most exciting times that's quite possible but we'd got to a population of 7.2 billion now that's 
that 7.2 billion is uh, for souls a soul is a male and a female one soul is a male and female and there's supposedly a hundred billion galaxies in the universe major galaxies and each one of the center of each one of these galaxies is a black hole which is a portal into another universe so that signifies a soul a pair a man and a woman soul each black hole in the center of each galaxy it's like part is the pinnacle of God's creation but we're multi-dimensional beings so we have we exist on three different dimensions so our soul is there in the center of that in that portal that's our universe that's that's where you, we really are now God has loaned us vehicles in his her universe so that we can experience and this is what planet earth is all about for us so, slight sidetracked here haven't I? but the numbers so 100 billion now 14 times 7 is 98 so if there are 14 planets 14 times 7 billion is 98 14 times 7.2 billion is 100.8 all right <laughs> it's close to 100 all right so we're close to the 100 billion number if there are 7.2 billion people well actually 7.2 billion souls for each planet so that means we actually should have 14.4 billion people now so this also comes from a presumption that there are just as many people alive on earth as there are in the spirit world and of course you probably picked up there that 14.4 coming from the Bible the 144,000 all souls are saved you know God isn't going to lose a single sheep so that's how that all sort of fitted together so it's kind of it's kind of nice it kind of fits so I mean but there's a there's a few presumptions in there but okay so what will happen then when we go to 10 billion there'll be three billion people who now have the life force of God and so has that already starting to happen there'll be humans who have the life force of God so they won't be a brother or sister of us they will actually be the life force in them will be our parent But at this moment, there may only be a few. <laughs> but that is a bit of a, you know, why? It doesn't make sense, does it? Well, I mean, it could. It's just, where's, where's the proof and everything else? Well, we wouldn't want all the answers, would we? I want to just know everything. It's a bit boring. It's got to be something else to... Uh, learn but that actually just reminded me of the other thing that's been going on in my head is how long do we spend in the spirit world what you know is there a set amount of time I mean if we have generally if you don't get killed you get 70 years on earth do you then get 70 years in heaven and then the next life or do you do you know what I mean because it seems that people who mediums who channel people from the spirit world 
you know, I'm really beginning to wonder if, I mean, I've felt spirits before, I've felt presences and everything else, but I'm really beginning to wonder if, um, if they're not tapping into some sort of, uh, sort of soul knowledge, like, so, you know, if after my life I die, I go to wherever, let's say I go into my next life, but if someone wants to contact me that was lived this life, there's sort of like a, you know, they can tap into the soul memory and get what I would say. <laughs> So whether, you know, there, there is a spirit, I mean, we go there every night in our sleep. We're in a different dimension that there you are. Well, there we are because you see other people there. So it's a shared, it's a shared place. We all have our true possession, our true universe where we will exist for, for however long eternity or whatever. But when we're in our mothers and fathers universe, like we are now, living physical lives and going to sleep and having dreams and, you know, then we're in our, then we're still in a shared place. We're still in a shared place with everyone. So when we die, then all we have left is a spirit body. Now, it'd be too much of a shock if that was taken away immediately as well. So... I guess it's needed as long as it's required and again there probably isn't a set time it's probably just as long as you want to until you're wanting to have a new life and if you think about it people babies and all right well they might cry when they first breathe in but it's probably just because it's a different feeling and um they're actually very enthusiastic about life I was very enthusiastic when I was a kid. So you probably just have as long as you need to get sort of reset and then you go back in. And I think anyone claiming that this takes, you know, hundreds of years or anything, I, I wouldn't believe that. Now, maybe for, maybe there have been some extremities where people have wanted to stay in the spirit world much longer that's quite possibly right but I personally feel like they'd be itching to get back down here that's what I think you might wonder why but you know I don't know what the spirit world's like do you and if if in the spirit world if one of the things that you want to do is have influence on the physical world which they do seem to then then you are probably would be quite itching to get back into it. And you'd, you know, agree your, uh, you know, roughly what your purpose was going to be. So, you know, one of the things I'm going to be doing is and I think this already, this is this has given me some ideas as to um, suss out with other people, you know, what, maybe, you know, how many times have they been human? And I think, you know, I think you could take one thing for sure, that if someone de wants to dedicate their life to a particular thing says so racing motorbikes or playing the piano then there's a good chance well let's uh, take the piano one away <laughs> they were riding motorbikes there's a good chance that they haven't done it before or they wanted to do it before and never got the chance i just thought with the piano when them Usually they don't get any choice to their piano players. They're either trained 
when they're young. But anyway, I think you know you can you could every every individual is going to be very different, and there's going to be all sorts of different reasons why they might be doing what they're doing. But there's a good chance that in what they're doing is is a reflection of uh, you know how many times they've been a human on this earth. Um, and I think, you know, it's often said by computer programmers that they have some sort of advanced mind, but, you know, they probably would, wouldn't they? That they're sort of quite sort of near the front of this, uh, what do you call it, um, boundary, frontier, you know, of learning and learning new things. Um you know, and I was interested in computers. I wasn't from the beginning, but sort of enjoyed taking them apart and stuff. Um, but, you know, because it was a new thing. It was enjoyable to be doing a new thing. And there's a lot of things I think that I've tried. I've just, you know, I've ridden a motorbike and I've done, driven a car fast and you know, and it doesn't, it sort of, driving fast cars, that was quite a bit of fun. And, but it was still limited. I still, you know, so it's quite possible that I've done that before. And I, I keep thinking with the motorbike. And I, I was felt like I was, came to it very naturally. Um, also, riding a horse my friend is a bit of an expert on horses when I first sat on a horse and you go you're a complete natural you know so maybe you know these things that we could feel like yeah I've probably done this before give you some idea hmm I think um, with my sore throat I might um, stop it there I think I will. Okay, ciao.